This is something no driver wants to see. You walk out to your car and a device is attached to the wheel to prevent you from moving, meaning you have been booted. And in order to get it removed, the driver is then on the hook for the cost. In Atlanta, two masked women are trying to shake up the booting industry one call at a time. The identity of the boot girls remains hidden for their safety, but they've become social media stars and state lawmakers are following their lead. Georgia state senators and an Atlanta city official are now trying to ban the act of booting, saying it's predatory and at times causing unnecessary violence. But booting companies say they only practice it where the city ordinance allows. Tonight, we take you along for a look inside the parking problems plaguing one of America's biggest cities and the vigilantes trying to fix it. When our mask is on, we're superheroes. When our mask is off, we're regular people living our regular life. We just take off boots. Yep, all day, every day. We're able to be like feminine Batman. We were at an apartment complex and Shiesty randomly got booted. They had a key and we just bought it from them and started our own. Oh, they got a boot. A day in life is like we usually wake up at like 8 a.m. to our phone blowing up. Oh, theirs is hard to put in there. There we go. And it's full of boots. And it can last to like, what, 3 a.m.? It's like going 40 up to 40 a day. a day. So we don't really have to do um, the whole week. You know, we got different vehicles, but we chose the Batmobile today for y'all. So play some tunes. This is a bad industry. It's wrong on all levels. Uh, and our job as lawmakers is to address that and protect our citizens. I haven't had one person complain about the boot girls uh, at this point. They've been nothing but raving fans. Uh, however, I'm sure if we had the booting companies here, they would say something different. You see through the social media reactions, uh, the reactions of local news, uh, when stories about booting come up, that this is a problem that uh, a lot of Atlantans actually are really concerned about. So you can park your car at a lot in Atlanta, walk off the property, come back and your car is going to be booted. Since 2012, we've helped at least 500,000 people who have been booted in Georgia. And Atlanta counts for the lion's share of that. This is big business in Atlanta. Everyone profits. The booting companies profit, the parking companies profit, even the business owners profit. Despite the fact that there are statutes and rules that keep them from giving kickbacks, they still do it in a lot of instances. So everyone's getting paid off of this, and the people who are parking, even in their own homes, are the ones paying the cost. Our state government should have acted a long time ago. And in some instances, people are very understandably upset. And that can lead to violent confrontations. No, ma'am, you can't do it. You can't, um, you can't, can't do it, ma'am. You're finna step no. on her foot. I'm not stepping on hey, your foot, would, you can't hey, do it. Hey, you need nope. to go, like, for real, for real. No, nope, you can't do this. The man was from a private parking company. He was very aggressive with us. He was putting like most of his body weight on us, making my hand stuck in the boot to where I can't turn or get the key out. I thought we was going to have to fight him. OK, but excuse me so I can take it. No. Can y'all call the police? Because he's harassing us. I'm calling the cops right now. Don't worry about it. I mean, and it's no, legal. Like, it's not. It's yes, not it legal. is. You touch my friend, I'm going to whip your You a great man. You're a great man. And you're, and you're hiding behind a mask. Okay, and what you going to do about it? A mask. It's kind of a dangerous job for a female, technically, especially with the audience and they know who you are. Um, they really try to attack you. But we're on the way. And she said, thank you. I've been arrested by the Atlanta Police Department. I was trying to help the people who had called me. And by the time I got there, all that was happening, they called the police and they just falsely accused me of throwing the boot over the fence. But the lot that it was at, there was no fence. Um, they just said things that they know were criminal to you know, have reasons for my arrest. The boot girls, we've identified them, we know who they are, and we're working through a process with other booting companies and APD to get them prosecuted. The problem is more with some of our state legislators 
that are actually encouraging this kind of activity. Well, here in the city of Atlanta, we have an ordinance that actually controls how we boot. So we have to be permitted by the city of Atlanta Police Department with background checks. We have to have signage at all the entrances. And there's a whole bunch of things that we have to do in order to boot a car legally. We only boot in areas where there is an ordinance. We work with our crew to educate them on how to speak to people. So to de-escalate things, if you communicate well with them, it tends to de-escalate a situation. Banning booting is, is short-sighted. And the reason why I say that is this. You take a property like this, which is a paid parking lot. If you ban booting, it's gonna leave my client one option for enforcement, and that's towing. Unfortunately for the people who are in violation at that point, the fee is gonna be three to four times higher. Property owners definitely have a right I mean, this is undisputed, right? To control who comes onto their property, uh, what the terms are, how much parking is, you know, how much it costs to stay there, how long they can stay there. What it comes down to is what is the most lawful, safe, and you know, humane way, really, to enforce parking. There's all kinds of different alternatives. Paper tickets, controlled access, uh, towing. How is the solution to that problem to trap my car there? Jeez. They got all the keys, they got the keys to the street. I make the keys that unlock the booting devices across the city of Atlanta and I sell those. Um, and then I manage the girls who actually do removal services. Not everybody is going to agree about what the boot girls are doing uh, or the people who are manufacturing keys. Now, I've advertised that I bought a boot key uh, from one of the guys uh, locally who is manufacturing them. Those keys, in my mind, represent is that people have had their rights to their own property taken away by force. This one company boots 100,000 cars a year in the city of Atlanta, so that's just one company. There's maybe 15 booting companies in the city. Amir Faroqi has been a champion against predatory booting in Atlanta. Five years ago when we tried to ban it, uh, and there wasn't political support on the council at the time to do so, I'll sympathize with some some lot owners and small business owners. It, it is a cost-effective way to try and manage parking. If you're parked illegally uh, and the private property owner or the city want to remove you from that spot, towing has that impact. Booting doesn't. The car is still in the spot, so the spot is not available for anyone else uh, if that's your intended, intended goal. We've had senators, we've had congressmen come in and say, if Atlanta can't get its act together, we'll get it together for them. They're used to running these lots like, you know, cowboys in the Wild West or something. Now you have drivers who say, you gotta call 911 if you wanna keep me here because I have the means to, to take this off. This industry depends on predatory practices and it's time for a statewide ban. I introduced a complete ban on booting and, and mindful that five years ago we had tried to regulate it, but the booting company had apparently backed out. And we got, at one point in the Senate, we had over half of the Senate that had either pledged to support the bill or had signed a, a, a version of the bill, um, you know, close to 30 votes. We brought a majority of the Senate essentially to the table, not just to regulate, but to ban it outright. When we come back to legislative session in January, uh, and it will be uh, certainly uh, my goal, and I believe uh, my counterpart here, to get that passed through committee on the Senate floor so Governor Brian Kemp can sign that into law. Uh, it's not easy changing the law, nor it should be. Oh, I get you. I think we both agree, banning the boot's the best option. We hope the boot is banned. We can go to a different state, different states calling us. Yeah, boot girls the will boot never girls. stop. It will always be a thing. <laughs> I think there's no question that they are playing the role of a superhero. But whether they are a superhero or just vigilantes, I think we're going to have to let people decide. ABC News did reach out to the Atlanta Police Department and they provided the public service announcement regarding boot keys, stating that it is not illegal to own a boot key, but if you use a boot key to disengage a booting device, you can be charged with trespassing, theft, or criminal damage to property. As for the case mentioned by the Boot Girls, that's still under investigation by the Atlanta Police Department. The attorney of the Boot Girls provided a statement saying that, in my opinion, the removal of a boot by an individual which does not cause damage to said boot is not a criminal infraction, and that an arrest by a law enforcement agency against someone who is not damaging the boot is misguided and succumbing to the political pressure of booting companies.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.